Hey everyone, this is Bathmetrics, and today we're doing episode 3 of Grid School for Bitwig 3.0. If you haven't seen the previous two videos in this series yet, I recommend you go to uh, my special YouTube playlist of just the Grid School videos and work your way through from the beginning, because each new video builds on concepts and ideas and techniques that I demonstrate in earlier videos in the series. So you can find a link to this playlist uh, in the description for this video. Uh, and the other thing I'd like to point out is that, as I mentioned in my very first overview video, this list of subjects I'm going to cover will grow and change as the series continues, and it's already increased by quite a lot. And uh, I've inserted some earlier subjects that I want to cover first because I'm trying to give you sort of a start to finish course that builds on basic things and then starts turning those basic ideas into specific use cases and common things we try to do in an instrument like the grid. So yeah, there we go. So today we're gonna to talk about um, the concept of snapshots and recovery. And what I mean by that is you start out with a simple grid and you start dragging things into it. You're dragging in oscillators and you're hooking things up and you're trying things out. And you always go off on these avenues of exploration. Like you get to a certain point and you decide this is pretty good, but there's still something I wanna try or there's something I wanna try different. And the tendency is to start going down a, a, some avenue of exploration and you find yourself in a place where you go, crap, I really don't like the way this is ending up. Let me get back to where I started. And you'll start trying to unhook things and delete things and reconnect wires where they were originally connected. And it can get confusing because, you know, some of these grid designs can get pretty big and complex just as you explore and try things out and go, wow, this sounds pretty cool. Let me see what happens if I do this. And let me see what happens if I do that. So there's a, a simple technique that I like to use for taking snapshots of a state that I like before I fork and try some new avenue of exploration. And that way I can always get, recover myself or get back to an earlier snapshot if I decide I didn't like the avenue of exploration. And some people will do this in different ways. They might do it by, you know, okay, I'm gonna build a grid device and then I kind of wanna make a snapshot so I'll duplicate my track and I'll stop working in that track and I'll start working in this track and then they'll make sure they're in the new track and they'll click the grid device and they'll keep going. But that's a little awkward because what'll happen over time is every time you wanna compare what you had here with what you did earlier, you're constantly having to like figure out which track you're in and enable record or enable monitoring uh, and A, B, and it's just kind of awkward to A, B. Or another thing people might do is, you know, they'll get along to a certain point in their grid design and they'll say, you know what, let me save my project and let me save this as, let me put this in a temp folder. I have so many things in work and progress. Um, you know, this is my, my sound design V1 and they'll give it a V1 name, right? And then they'll make some more changes and then at some point they'll decide, wow, I should really kind of snapshot where I am here. So they'll do file save as, and this time they'll save it as V2 and V3 and V4. And again, that causes similar problems when you want to compare what you had earlier versus what you have now, because now you're having to open up entirely new projects up here and go back and forth between the projects and turn the audio engine on, turn the audio engine off, and it's just a big hassle, okay? So I'm gonna show you the simple way to do it. Um, you can do this if you've already started a grid design or you can do it at the beginning, it doesn't matter. The basic idea is simple. You're gonna take advantage of Bitwig's selector instruments or devices, okay? These are special container devices. If you start searching for the word selector, you're gonna find the instrument selector and the FX selector. You'll use the instrument selector for polygrid devices, and you'll use the FX selector for FX grid devices. So let's see what that looks like. If I drop in an instrument selector on this track, I can drag this polygrid right inside it. And now this polygrid lives on one chain or one channel or one layer 
depending on where you come from, Ableton calls these chains. Um, this grid device lives in a layer. And you can simply be in one single track that is, um, let's get to the inspector for it, that's record enabled. And then you can say, okay, at this point, I want to snapshot what I've got. So you give it a name like V1. And then you do, you select the chain here and you do control D to duplicate it. Name this chain V2. And then click the little button right here to turn it yellow. So this is now the active chain in the selector. And this chain is effectively kind of sort of mostly disabled. It's not using any CPU. It's not incurring any latency. It's still using memory, but that's a different story for a different video. I've already covered how to deactivate things to also free up memory usage. But you don't have to do that when you're doing sound design. Just, just make sure you've activated the one you want and then just click that window to make sure you're looking at that new window. And now you can start dragging in new things and trying new paths of exploration. And then anytime you want to go back or AB compare with the previous version, you just click the yellow button for that previous version. Make sure you've also selected the track and then click its window. And now you're looking at the previous design. So this can be a real easy way to keep all your snapshots in one simple place on one single track and not have to mess around with audio engine flipping on and off or deciding which track you're on and turning record or monitoring on and off. It's just all in one place and you just uh, can keep going. You know, here we are in V2. Let's dupe that and keep that as a snapshot. And now let's do alt click and call this one V3 and uh, keep going with more design. We're in this track, we've activated it. So this is the polygrid we're gonna be playing now. And if I click this, I'm back here and I can keep going and dragging in yet more and more things, right? So simple way to do snapshot and recovery, do it all in an instrument selector. And then let's say, you know, at some point you're here and you go, wow, I really like this version. This is so far my favorite version. You can put little extra keywords in here like best so far. You know, you can add little notes to yourself like this. And then let's say I try six or seven different things and I eventually decide, yeah, you know what? I like version three the best. Well, you can always come here, grab this chain, make sure you're looking at that specific uh, polygrid device in that chain. And now just grab the polygrid device and drag it outside of the container so that it's standing on its own and it's no longer inside this instrument selector. And now you can just delete the instrument selector and boom, you've got your polygrid. And you did all this design in one track, one easy way, lots of back and forth A, B uh, experimentation. And then you get down to what you really wanna use going forward and simplify it down like this and you're done, okay? And it's the same basic idea for an FX grid. The only difference here is first you would search for selector and put in an FX selector. And then you would click the plus sign inside the FX selector and type grid and pull in your FX grid. And you'll notice because it's an FX selector, it doesn't allow you to put polygrids inside of it. And the same is true if you pick an instrument selector, it'll only show you a polygrid here when you search for grid and you can only put polygrids inside it. So we put our FX grid in and we start our design and we start going with our snapshotting and recovery. Hope that helped. I'll see you in the next one.